This is the city, Los Angeles, California. I work here. I carry a badge. The story you are about to see is true. The names have been changed to protect the innocent. December 5th, it was fair in Los Angeles. We were working out of detective headquarters, missing persons detail. The boss is Captain Harry Didion. My partner's Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. We were handling missing juveniles. Most of the cases were routine. Some were not. Right. Yes, ma'am. All right, Ms. Atkins, we'll be right out. Maxwell High School? That's right. A girl is missing out there. They don't think she went willingly. 9.40 a.m. We drove over to Maxwell High, a new open campus school in the San Fernando Valley. Mrs. Lillian Atkins is the girl's vice principal. We had worked with her before. We knew she didn't alarm easily. Her name is Dorothy Henderson, Sergeant. Age 16, birth date March 8th, 5'2", 105 pounds. Quite attractive, exceptionally well-mannered, and well-liked by her teachers and classmates. When was she last seen? Yesterday morning. As Soon as I realized she was missing, I called her home. I called repeatedly all day yesterday and also last night and again this morning. I never got an answer. That's why I called you. Of course, I may be alarmed for nothing. It could be an ordinary truancy. Except I can't help feeling, in view of everything, there must be more to it than that. You want to tell us exactly what happened? Dorothy was in her English class yesterday morning when I had her summoned here to my office. What was that for, Miss Atkins? We're having an open house soon. I wanted to ask her to be head receptionist. Go on, please. Well, Dorothy left her classroom and started across the campus. Normally, it takes less than three or four minutes to walk here. I see. But she never arrived. Here's a snapshot one of her classmates took of her. You can almost tell from the photo she's quiet, courteous, respectful. During the three months she's been here, she's never been absent. Never late, never truant. And I believe that alone would be reason enough to think that something's happened to her. There's another reason, is there? I talked to several of her classmates this morning. One of them, a girl named Barbara Cook, told me an almost unbelievable story. What's that? Apparently, Dorothy has been terrified all the time she's been here. According to Barbara, a man named Harper has been following her. Did she say who this Harper was? No, just that he's out to get her. 10.30 a.m., we talked to the school's registrar. In the meantime, Mrs. Atkins summoned Barbara Cook to her office. You know, if you ask me, you're going to a lot of trouble for nothing. She's probably just out somewhere having a good time. Is that right? Oh, yes. I remember her well. We don't get many older sisters coming in to register younger sisters. Is that so? A week or two before the fall semester began, the Henderson girl's older sister, she gave her name as um, Carol Henderson, came in to register Dorothy. Dorothy wasn't with her. Apparently, she'd been sick, and the doctor wanted her to stay in bed till school started. Well, what about their parents? Why didn't one of them register her? Well, they couldn't. Why not? Well, they were both killed in a plane crash. 11 a.m., we talked to Dorothy Henderson's classmate, Barbara Cook. You're not ordinary fuzz, are you? You're from the vice squad. No, miss, we're not. You're detectives anyway. You know something awful has happened to Dorothy. No, miss, we're not sure anything's happened to her. Maybe she just cut classes. Oh, no, not Dorothy. I've tried to get her to cut before, but she wouldn't. She was too scared. Of what? Everything. Everything except us kids. You'd never know she was scared of anything when she was with us. Know what I think? I think she was afraid of you adults, because she had a very unhappy home life. Now, did she tell you all that? No, but it was easy to tell. She never wanted to go home. You told Mrs. Atkins about a man named Harper. Sure, but she's already told you about that, or you wouldn't be here. Well, we'd like to hear it from you. Well, Dorothy had nightmares about him. She told me about one of them. It was awful. He did terrible things to her. He locked her up in a terrible place. This was a dream? Yeah, but he was real. She said he was out to get her, and if she wasn't careful all the time, he would. And a couple of times when we were out walking, she thought she saw him following us and nearly fainted. Did you see him? Well, not exactly. When I turned, he was gone. Sort of. I mean, I just saw somebody turning a corner. He was big, taller than you are. 
and he had big, wide shoulders. Well, now, did Dorothy ever tell you anything about him? I mean, besides his name? No, I asked her lots of times, but she always got mad. Once she started to cry, she made me promise I'd never tell anybody about him. Did she ever tell you why he was out to get her? No, but she did say she hated him, more than she hated anybody else in the world. She said he was an awful liar, a real creep who pretended to be a friend, but wasn't at all. Did she ever say where she met him or where he worked? No, never. What about his first name? She ever say? No, I'd remember if she did. Did she ever tell you anything about her sister? I didn't even know she had one until she dropped her purse. How do you mean? Everything inside spilled out. I helped her pick it up. That's when I saw all the credit cards and things with Carol Henderson's name on them. Dorothy got real shook up. She made me promise I'd never tell anybody anything about them, especially what I saw in one of them. What was that? Dorothy's sister is a model at Faye's Fashion Salon. 11.50 a.m., we tried phoning Dorothy Henderson's home again. There was still no answer. We requested that a patrol unit check the address. Nobody was home. We drove over to the fashion salon where the sister worked. Gentlemen, gowns for your ladies, lounging pajamas, lingerie. No, ma'am, we're police officers. We'd like to talk to the manager. Well, I'm Faye Wallace, the owner. This is Officer Gannon. My name's Friday. Introductions aren't necessary. Just state your business. What is it? Some petty ordinance I violated. Are my trash cans blocking the driveway again? No, ma'am. We'd like to talk to you about one of your employees. Well, which one? I've 18. Carol Henderson. She's not here. Now, is there anything else? Do you know where we can find her? I do not. And if I did, I'd go there and fire her. And with good reason. I could have given her a great career. I could have made her one of the leading mannequins in the business. But she runs off with that man. What man is that? Oh, I can't think of his name. I only met him once, and that was enough. Is Harper the name? Harper? No, of course not. Why would you think that? It's Norris. That's it. Jeffrey Norris. Any idea where we can find him? No, I haven't. Probably with her. She told me once he was in computers, but I wouldn't listen to anything else about him. I didn't like him, and I told her right away he wasn't any good. Handsome men never are. But would she listen? Would she let me look after her? Would she even return my confidences and be my friend? No, not at all. What's this all about, anyway? Has she done something? No, ma'am. We're just trying to locate her younger sister. Sister? Carol has a sister? You didn't know? That's what I mean. In spite of everything I've done for her, she kept her personal life a total secret. That's gratitude for you, isn't it? Yes, ma'am. She looks after the child. That's right. It's hard to understand. She's not the type. And even if she is, Norris isn't. A little girl would get in his way. And you know what that means? No, ma'am. What does that mean? He'd do something about it. Five forty a.m. We spent the rest of the afternoon checking out Jeffrey Norris. We finally got a lead on him through an association of computer programmers. Well, thank you very much. Norris does work for Gardner Data Systems, but he's on a leave of absence for a month. Maybe her boss was right. Maybe they went away together. She could have left Dorothy with a friend. Or on her own. Joe? Bill? Barrett? I checked out that Henderson apartment for you again. Nobody home? That's right, but the building superintendent was in this time, so was a neighbor. They both swear that Carol Henderson hasn't got a sister. She lives alone. Anything else? No, thanks. Not now, Barrett. Right. Her boss didn't think she had a sister either. Yeah, I know. Maybe she doesn't. Maybe, except for one thing. What's that? Somebody's been going to that school. Joe, there's a lady waiting out here to see you. Want to send her in? Sergeant Friday? That's right. I believe you're looking for my sister. My name's Carol Henderson. At 50 p.m., Carol Henderson stated her sister Dorothy was perfectly all right. She came to tell us to stop looking for her. We talked to your employer and a couple of your neighbors. They were all surprised to hear you had a sister. That's ridiculous. They said you lived alone. I never heard of such a thing. Why would I make up a sister? That's what we were wondering, Miss Henderson. I might not have mentioned her at work. I don't remember. But the people at the apartment, they should have seen her. Except... Except what? Well, she's only been with me a few months, and she does resemble me when I'm wearing a brown wig. Some of them could have thought we were the same person. I know it doesn't sound plausible, but what other explanation could there be? I'm not lying. Why would I? No reason we know of. Wait. I can prove I've got a sister. Here's their picture. Oh, I see you've got a print of the same photo. I bet I know where you got that. From Barbara Cook, Dorothy's girlfriend. You can see for yourselves, that's little Dorothy. 
And I can prove who I am, in case you don't believe that either. I've got loads of identification. Who told you we were looking for your sister? One of my neighbors. Obviously one you didn't talk to. She must have heard it from the others. Now, your employer told us that you'd left town for a month. Is that so? Well, that was the idea, but plans have a way of changing. You don't have a driver's license? No, I don't drive. You haven't told me why you were looking for Dorothy. She disappeared from school. Oh, is that all? There's nothing to worry about, really. When a young girl drops out of sight, we worry. Of course you do. I'm sorry, I should have notified the school, but I assume Dorothy told them what's happening. What's that? We're moving. We're going to live in Syracuse, New York. In fact, Dorothy's already on her way there. I put her on the bus yesterday. That's why she left school in the middle of the morning, is that it? The bus left at one. She didn't have to go to school at all, but she insisted. She wanted to see her friends and tell them goodbye. She liked going to Maxwell, did she? Very much. She was terribly happy there, for the first time in years. She made friends there, girls who took her as she was, who didn't expect too much from her. You've no idea how important such friends are. She never seemed to manage to make friends before, not real friends. What about the other schools she attended? Recently, you mean? No. They always seemed to demand more from her than she could give. They never seemed satisfied. Friendship wasn't enough. No matter how hard she tried to make them like her, they seemed to shut her out. They were always ready to compete, never to accept. It's a terrible thing not to belong, to be uncertain of everyone and everything. But of course, you wouldn't know what that's like, would you? No, why not? You're a policeman. You're always sure of yourself. <laughs> Six twenty p.m. Before checking out for the day, I went over the Henderson package again. Seven p.m. I decided to re-interview some of Carol Henderson's neighbors. One of them, who was not at home before, told me Carol had gone to visit her parents in Portland, Oregon. Nine p.m. I returned to the office and sent a teletype to the Portland Police Department. Friday, December sixth, eight thirty a.m. The reply was waiting when I came in. Morning, Joe. Brought you some coffee. Thanks. At Carol Henderson. Thought we wrapped that up yesterday. Uh, she didn't fit the idea I had of her. She didn't walk or talk like a model, not the ones I've known. Last night on my way home, I stopped off and re-interviewed some of her neighbors. I caught a couple of them in that weren't when we were out there last time. Yeah? Listen to this. Carol Henderson, according to all of them, is 5'7", at least, in her bare feet. That girl yesterday was stretching to make 5'4 in high heels. She does wear glasses, but only for reading. None of her neighbors have seen her all week. None of them told her we were looking for her sister. You're beginning to add. What's the total? Teletype. Portland PD. Carol's there visiting her parents. Jeffrey Norris is with her. They were married last week. Last August, she lost her wallet on Hollywood Boulevard. It contained all of her ID, credit cards, driver's license. The works. That raises a couple of questions. Yeah, who did we talk to yesterday? One more. Yeah. Who told her we were looking for Dorothy? 9.20 a.m., we drove over to see Barbara Cook again, Dorothy Henderson's classmate. We explained the reason for our visit to Mrs. Cook. She called her daughter in. Oh, hi. I hope you don't think I'm playing hooky or anything today. My first class doesn't start till 10.30. We know. These officers want to ask you some more questions about Dorothy. Oh, sure. Now, have you seen Dorothy since we talked with you yesterday? No, sir. Not since she left school. You're sure about that? Yes, sir. How would you caught that kidnapper yet? Oh, I bet he's done something awful to her already. Barbara. I bet he grabbed her, threw her in his car, and drove down to Mexico or somewhere with her. Barbara, that's enough. I'm sorry, Sergeant. I just don't know where she comes by that morbid imagination. It's not imagination. She was afraid of a man, and his name is Harper. Well, that may be so, but you don't know if he had anything to do with her disappearance now, do you? Well, no, not exactly. But if she was afraid of him, he could have kidnapped her. Yes, he could have, but he didn't. How do you know for sure? Her sister came to see us yesterday. She said Dorothy's on her way to Syracuse. Oh, then everything's all right. Yes, except for one thing. How did Carol Henderson know we were looking for her sister? Nobody at school told her or Dorothy. They couldn't have. They haven't seen him. Maybe she heard it on the radio? It wasn't on the radio. No, somebody talked to Dorothy or Carol yesterday. Somebody we talked to. It wasn't me. It wasn't honest. Barbara. I'm telling the truth. I swear it. Whenever she says honest and starts swearing it, she's usually lying. Mother. Now, don't mother me, young lady. Did you tell Dorothy these officers were looking for her, or didn't you? If she's on her way to Syracuse, she's all right, isn't she? There's still a few things we have to clear up. Dorothy hasn't done anything wrong. We're just trying to help her. Now, you can help her, too, by helping us. Go on, tell them. I promised her I wouldn't tell. 
You did see her? Yesterday, after school. She was waiting for me. She wanted to know what happened after she didn't go to the VP's office. She got real scared when I told her about you. She even started to cry. What'd she say? She said she'd have to go away. She said she didn't want to, but she'd have to. She said I was the best friend she ever had. And she said I was her only true friend. All right, go on. She knew all the other kids at school, but she liked me best. She even gave me something to remember her by. What was it? Just an old case for her glasses. I told her once I liked it just to make her feel good. I wonder if we could see it. You can have it. I don't want it. We didn't know she wore glasses. She didn't, but she had them in her bag all the time. The optometrist's name is on it. 11.40 a.m., the optometrist's office was in Beverly Hills. We drove over to see him. Well, you were lucky to catch me in. Usually, I start an early weekend on the golf course. But I have a couple of old, important clients coming up from Palm Springs. Couldn't say no. You know how it is. Yes, sir. Any idea when she first got the glasses? No, sir, we don't. Well, one thing for certain, it had to be in the last six months. Why is that? Well, I didn't stock this particular kind of case before that. As a matter of fact, I've discontinued it. Not too many people choose it. Too colorful for most. Do you keep a record of those who do? Yes, we do. This particular case runs a dollar more. And the way it looks, there were only 10 who paid it. How old did you say the girl was? 16. Five foot two, 105 pounds, dark hair, wears it long and loose the way the kids do. No, I'm afraid not. And we can eliminate these four right away. They weigh 150 or more. I remember nearly all my clients. Most of them have been with me for years. And let's see, we can eliminate these two. They're men. And that leaves only four, and none are under 20. Sorry. You sure? Completely. Well, thank you anyway. Any of them 25, maybe? Well, as a matter of fact, yes. Two. Five foot two, 105 pounds? Well, that eliminates one of them. Can you describe the other one? Well, she's a pretty girl, average. I'm afraid I'm not much good at descriptions. If you want to know anything about facial contours or eye shapes, I can tell you that, but... Uh... Remember the color of her hair? Uh, yes, blonde. How was she dressed? Very smartly, quietly, but effectively. Quite effectively. I think it was a tailored suit. High heels? <laughs> yes, I remember noticing them. They were quite high. Carol Henderson. Yeah. Dorothy and her sister's glasses. Wait a minute, did you say Henderson? If that's the name, this isn't the one. What name did she give you? Lawson. Shirley Lawson. And that's her real name, I know. How's that? Well, her mother works in the restaurant right next door. 12.30 p.m. We went next door to talk to Mrs. Lawson. Mrs. Lawson? Yes, that's right. We're police officers, Mrs. Lawson. This is Bill Gannon. My name's Friday. What's the matter? Has something happened? No, ma'am. We'd just like to talk to you about your daughter. Well, that's what I mean. Is she all right? As far as we know. Do you know where she is right now? At school. There's a football game or something later. Now, by school, you mean Maxwell High. No, of course not. She graduated from high school some time ago. She's going to junior college. Would you describe her for us, please? She's got dark hair like mine, except sometimes she wears a blonde wig. She's about my height, 5'2", I'd say. She's lost a little weight lately. Must be down to 105. Does she wear glasses? Yes, sometimes. She's got contact lenses, too. Does she have a red tailored suit, long sleeves? Yes, she does. What's this all about? A woman answering that description came to see us yesterday, and she gave her name as Carol Henderson. We were looking for her younger sister, Dorothy, who disappeared from school. Do you think Shirley was this Carol Henderson? Yes, ma'am, we do. But this sister, Dorothy. My Shirley's an only child. She hasn't got a sister. Who is she? Well, now, maybe you can tell us, Mrs. Lawson. Is that your daughter? Well, yes. Yes, that's Shirley. You say she's been going to high school? Yes, ma'am, since the beginning of the semester. Three months, and I thought she was going to junior college. You don't seem too surprised. Her psychiatrist said something like this might happen. She's under psychiatric care, is she? She sees him one evening a week. Maybe if you want the whole story, you should talk to him. I don't really understand it too well. All right, if you'll be good enough to give us his name and address, please. I'll write it down for you. And I'd be grateful if you'd come and tell me what he says. Yes, ma'am. I'll be at home waiting for Shirley. That's the second address I've put down. All right, ma'am. This is the psychiatrist's name? Yes, what? Dr. William Harper. 2.30 p.m., Dr. Harper met us at his office. We explained the situation to him. Like the girl's mother, he wasn't surprised. So Shirley first posed as Carol Henderson to enroll her mythical younger sister, Dorothy, in high school. And then she dropped the Carol identity and attended school as Dorothy. Yes, sir, that's how we see it. Yesterday, she created Carol again so she could come and tell you people Dorothy was all right. And of course, I'm the villain in her drama because she feared I'd have her committed if I found out about her masquerades. You know, in spite of my many years of experience, the ingenuity of my patients never ceases to amaze me. 
And there's still something that needs explanation. Why did she choose the particular identity she did? Well, the real Carol Henderson lost her wallet and all of her identification was in it. And Shirley found it and perhaps it even suggested the entire episode to her. Yes, sir. There's something else that needs explaining, too. What's that, Sergeant? Why did she do it? Shirley Lawson is an extremely unhappy woman. Her father's death, a disastrous love affair, together with other events, have given her a sense of failure. And such a feeling soon engenders other defeats. Soon a cycle is established. Inadequacy creates inadequacy. Well, she didn't appear inadequate yesterday. Of course not. You see, she wasn't herself. She was someone else who was adequate. In her own life, the feeling of inadequacy had obviously reached a point at which college life became impossible. She felt she couldn't compete. She felt she was continually disappointing her professors. The cycle continued. It had to be broken, and that's exactly what I've been trying to accomplish during my weekly sessions with her. Apparently, the patient succeeded where the doctor failed. In what way, exactly? She broke the cycle herself by going back to a time when she didn't feel inadequate, a period in her life in which she could reestablish her self-esteem, a time in which, in a sense, she could rest and recuperate. You might say, coast a little while. I see. And I approve. She could have chosen a far more disastrous solution. Personal harm, suicide. In fact, that possibility still exists. You'll both have to be very cautious or we could have a serious setback on our hands. How do you mean, Doctor? Well, when you see her, please be extremely careful, won't you? Yes, sir, we will. Whatever you do, don't add to her own self-condemnation. Four thirty p.m. We drove over to the Lawson apartment. We told Mrs. Lawson everything Dr. Harper had told us. I shouldn't have let that restaurant take up so much of my life. I should have spent more time with Shirley. You still can, Mrs. Lawson. What happens next? I mean, you won't arrest her, will you? Oh, it's you. One, you mean the football game? We did. Good game? It was tied almost to the end. I didn't do anything wrong, did I? What do you think? I found the wallet. We figured that. And I lied to you. The real Carol Henderson did have a driver's license. I tore it up. We figured that. I didn't want to cut school. I had to. The VP called me to her office. She wanted you to be head receptionist at the open house. Oh, I thought they would found out a... Head receptionist. That's right. I guess you'll want this. Mrs. Atkins said that. It's kind of an honor, isn't it? You know, Mother, I think I'll start wearing my wig more often. It makes me look older. Will you thank Mrs. Atkins for me? You can do that yourself. At the game today. It was fun. But I kept looking around at all the kids. You know, I don't belong with them. I'm going to enroll in a different school. Another high school? No, Mother. I'm too old for that. Where are you going to go? Eastwood Junior College. Well, what do we put in the report? Nothing. It's no crime to act your age. The story you have just seen is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. Since Shirley Lawson committed no crime, no charge was brought against her. However, the psychiatrist re-examined her case. In a moment, the results of that evaluation. In view of her own efforts to adjust, Shirley Lawson's psychiatrist reported a favorable prognosis and instituted practical therapy. Mm -hmm. 